thank you for joining us this morning here at Grace Baptist Church. Uh, certainly a little different setting than what we are accustomed to. And uh, we are looking forward to just spending a little time together in God's Word this morning. And I just wanted to mention that yesterday, obviously, as this whole situation has been changing by the day, uh, we did meet as a pastoral staff and just wanted to continue our services online. And as we go forward, we'll be doing some different things next week, and we'll be online again next week. Uh, but we certainly wanted to continue on in our, in our services. So again, I thank you for joining us and um, just wanted to spend a, a little bit of time sharing uh, some content with you today. And uh, then in a little bit, we'll end our time together this morning uh, with a word of prayer. You know, American life over the last few weeks has been greatly impacted by the COVID-19 uh, situation. I like the majority of churches here, not just in Wilmington, but around our, our country, the vast majority of them are doing exactly what we are doing, and they are meeting through uh, social media and other, other uh, platforms. But this is certainly unusual for our church family. This isn't our, our norm. And I was thinking this morning just how the athletic world has been uh, just greatly disrupted, and, and our entertainment uh, culture has also been greatly disrupted. Uh, we know that uh, Wall Street has been greatly impacted over the last several days. In addition, in addition to that, I was talking to a, a lady yesterday, and she was telling me that um, in one of the towns of one of her relatives, there was a fist fight in a Walmart. There was one item left on a shelf, and uh, two folks decided that they uh, needed it and it and what happened was a uh, a fist fight broke out as these two folks were trying to get the last item on the shelf uh, that's not normal for our country uh, this, these things are not where we normally live you may have missed this and not not caught this yet, uh, yesterday but governor cooper uh, instituted an executive order that uh, in addition to closing k through 12 schools and uh, public schools women to christian academy as well will be closed for at least two weeks as the governor has, has mandated, but it also prohibits any mass gatherings of more than 100 people and uh, lists very specific limitations on that. And so churches obviously are a part of that. This is unprecedented to be sure. And we understand that. You probably have seen the anxiety in people. I'll come back to this in a few minutes, but I was walking through a Walmart parking lot a few days ago and there was a young couple that were getting out of their car and, and they were expressing the frustration and the lack of just not understanding why our culture is where we are today and what is what is taking place. You probably have talked to people that are very uneasy right now and I understand all of that. This is unprecedented to be sure but this morning I want to spend a little bit of time and talk to us, uh, talk to you and talk to myself as well about keeping things in perspective, keeping life in perspective. Because when we lose perspective, we are on dangerous ground. And we can lose perspective so quickly and, and so easily. But today we want to talk about three particular areas that we need to keep perspective on as we are facing this um, public health situation. I want to talk to you first of all for a few minutes um, about this issue regarding our citizenship. What are we as believers supposed to do? How are we supposed to respond to some of the issues that are taking place regarding our, our political leaders and those that are civil leaders in Wilmington and even on the national stage? I want to call your attention probably to a familiar verse uh, for you, but in Romans chapter 13, Paul gives us some very specific instruction concerning how we treat those that are in civil leadership. Paul says this, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. He continues and, and he says, for there is no authority except from God and those that exist have been instituted by God. He says, therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed and those who, res who resist will incur judgment. I won't read the rest of that text because some of the verses that follow don't necessarily 
um, apply to what we're talking about today, but Paul is then describes their responsibility to um, hold those that violate the laws of the country, uh, to hold them accountable. He even talks about taxes and some of those issues, but that's not really um, what we want to talk about regarding our citizenship today as we're thinking through COVID-19. First of all, I want you to think about what Paul says, that civil government has been established by God. You might think about it this way. There's three realms of human authority. We have uh, parental authority. We also have um, pastoral authority in local churches, but we also have civil authority. And Paul tells us that these things have been instituted by God. So we as believers in this time of unprecedented territory where none of us have been before, we have to remember that as believers, we are called to be model citizens. We are, mo we are called to obey our civil government, and we are to do that particularly when we are facing times of, of difficulty and challenge. I won't go into a lot of the technical language on this verse and on these couple of verses that I read this morning, but Romans 13, 1 Paul tells us that as believers, we are to subordinate ourselves to those that are in positions of, of leadership. The submission to our authorities, our civil leaders, is supposed to be willing. Now, it doesn't mean that it's mindless. And I know some of you may be, may be thinking this along these lines. Well, there are times that we don't have to obey our civil government when they are asking us to do something that is in complete contradiction to Scripture. And I would say you're correct in that. But I would ask you today to think about this COVID-19 through the issue of the fact that this is not dealing with an issue of biblical authority. What we are dealing with is really an issue of public health. It's an issue of concern for us as communities. And so how do we respond to our governor's directives? How do we respond to those in leadership that have given us these guidelines and directives that we as citizens are, are called to live by? I wanted to take a few moments and just ask you to think about this, not only from a, a governmental perspective, we'll come back to that in just a moment, but from a healthcare perspective. Um, maybe, I don't know how closely you're following the news, and maybe you've heard this term, and, and maybe you haven't, but some of the leaders in the healthcare industry are talking about flattening the curve. And you may be scratching your head and wondering, what in the world does that, does that mean? And how does this idea of flattening the curve apply to some of the directives that our governor and others have, have given us? How, why are we supposed to practice social distancing and why are we not supposed to um, congr congregate together? The one young couple that I managed, uh, mentioned in the beginning as they were getting out of their car, I heard the young man say, very frustrated, in a very frustrated voice, he said, but there's not been one single case yet in, in Wilmington. And at that point in time, he, he was correct, that's true. But I want you to think about this idea of flattening the curve. If you think about a, a bell curve, one that is very high and rises very, very quickly, from a healthcare perspective, um, this is a very dangerous thing. Because what a very steep curve means is, is that this virus would be infecting people at an unprecedented rate and people becoming ill very quickly. What our government is trying to get us to think about is if we suppress that and flatten that, it doesn't mean that people may not get the virus, but it spreads it out over a, a period of time. And I want you to think about it from this perspective for a few moments. Many of you know, some of you may not know, but uh, my, my original career in life, I was in the healthcare industry. And I spent many years working in, in hospitals. I spent many years working in intensive care units. I spent a lot of time dealing with very critically ill people. And I will tell you that my, my experience says that this time of year, February, March, that period of time, hospitals on a normal year are already pressed in a very real way. Um, I can remember times when our ICU was so full 
that we were taking other areas of the hospital, like the recovery room and the operating room, and making that ICU beds. Because already at this time of the year, you have something called RSV, which is the fancy word is respiratory syncytial virus. Adults can get it. All kinds of people can get it. But, it, but children particularly are very susceptible to RSV. And some families in our church have already wrestled with RSV this year. You also have people that are already struggling with influenza. The flu is already something that is impacting hospitals. So in a normal year, Okay, in the normal course of taking care of patients that are critically ill, it was not uncommon, even in some of the bigger medical centers that I worked in, that we would reach the place where we had no means to ventilate a critically ill patient. What, that, what I'm saying is we would have ventilators that we would keep close watch on how many we had. And there were years that we would be using every ventilator that our hospital owned. I remember times we had uh, ventilators we would use on transports. They were very small. They were limited in their functions of what they could do. And yet we were having to use them on critically ill patients because we had no other means to ventilate a, a very sick person. What we were able to do at that time was to rent ventilators. We would bring them in from other places and we would then um, use them as long as we needed them. And then we would return them. I want you to think about the fact, though, what is happening. We've seen this in, in Italy and, and some of the other cases that are in other places of the world where this is going on. Imagine if all of the ventilators at a hospital is being used and then all the rentals are also being used in major, major medical centers around the country. It is possible that we could reach a place where hospitals don't have the equipment that they need. Here's the other situation. This time of year, not only are people coming into the hospital ill, but you have staff members in the healthcare industry that are also getting sick. And you're now working off in short staff and, and long shifts. And so the, the strain on the healthcare system this time of year is already very heavy. Here's the other problem. And this is one of the things that our, our governmental authorities are trying to get us to think about is that when people flood the emergency room because maybe they are thinking they had COVID, they have COVID-19 or they, they have a minor injury, and I saw this in healthcare, where people would come to the emergency room without a critical situation and bog down the system. And so while you may not personally agree with our government's uh, decision to practice social distancing or maybe you don't fully agree with schools closing and those, those types of decisions, we have to understand that the underlying reason that our governor and other leaders are making these decisions is so that the spread of this virus is slowed down as much as possible. And so I would ask you as a believer in Christ, if you know Christ is your savior as a model citizen, please do and abide by what our government is asking us to do. I don't believe that our governor and others are, are purposefully trying to make our lives miserable or difficult, but they are trying to preserve our, our, um, our hospital uh, situation and making sure that our healthcare workers are able to take care of those that are in need. I read an article this morning that was talking about where if we were to reach that point is that physicians could be put into a position where they may have to make some kind of decision on who gets the last ventilator. None of us want to be in those situations, and so let's be wise. Paul says that, um, that civil government is given to us, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, for the protection of its citizens, particularly to restrain evil. Paul says that the authority is given by God. They are God-ordained positions of authority. They are supposed to hold those who uh, violate the laws of our, of our land. They're supposed to hold them accountable. But I would also add that part of that safety is, in fact, for us in a healthcare sense to make sure that we are um, taking care of ourselves and those in our community and in our, in our neighborhoods that are particularly vulnerable to something like COVID-19. Um, so please cooperate with the authorities. I want to I mention something else in regard to our responsibility under uh, civil government. Um, Paul also tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, he says, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving 
be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful a, and quiet, godly and dignified in life in every way. Let me ask you and urge you that you would pray for those that are in positions of civil leadership. I would also ask you to be in prayer for those that are in the healthcare industry. Um, they are on the front lines of, of this situation and they're exposing themselves uh, to potentially um, um, hazardous uh, situations that can make them ill. And so please be in prayer for them. Before I leave this topic of, of our civil responsibility, I want to reiterate that there are rare occasions that we are to practice civil disobedience. Those times are limited to when scripture is being, we are being asked to violate scripture in particular. My friend, the coronavirus situation does not rise to that level. This situation and the directives from our government do not rise to the level that require civil disobedience. That is why as a church, we will continue to meet in this format as long as necessary. Uh, that is also why our school is following the K through 12 mandate um, to close our school. And so let's keep our, our community um, in our minds. Probably that's, that's something that you, that you understand to some degree. But now I wanna to talk to you on a spiritual level and 